The point P 1 5th comma 15 lies on the curve y equals 3 over x. If Q is the point x comma 3 over x, find the slope of the secant line PQ for the following values of x. So whatever the curve of this function looks like, 3 over x, it's an inverse function. It should look uh, something to this effect right here, I believe. We would have horizontal asym or sorry, a vertical asymptote at zero, so it's undefined. It should basically look something like this. Now we have some point one fifth and fifteen. All right, so let's just say it's hypothetically right there. And this point right here is just any other point that happens to exist on the curve because you choose some x value, plug that x value into your function, and you get the y value associated with it. So it gives you a point on this, on here. So what we're looking for is the slope of the secant line between those two points. And even though the second point is a function, that's still okay. We can still work with that. We can still find a slope between those. We can say the slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is 3 over x minus 15 divided by x minus 1 fifth, which is a perfectly fine function to work with, and you could put this right into the calculator now and use it to come up with the answers to this question. However, this particular form is going to require quite a bit of parentheses, and it's my experience that students aren't so strong when it comes to plugging stuff into the calculator with a lot of parentheses. So simplifying is generally considered a good idea here. And to simplify, what you could do is uh, say, like in the top here, we could try and get a common denominator by multiplying the second fraction by uh, x over x, and in the bottom, multiply the first fraction by 5 over 5. So that would give me 3 minus 15x over x divided by 5x minus 1 over 5. So 3 minus 15x over x times, and instead of dividing fractions, I'm going to invert and multiply. And let's see here. It appears that I've got a common factor of 3 in this numerator here. And I could pull that out, and that would leave me 3 times 1 minus 5x uh, times 5, which, you know what, let me fix that. We'll just make this 15. Then over x times 5x minus 1. And again, this is a perfectly thing, valid function to work with. You could plug this into the calculator and get your answers. No problem. But you're still going to need double sets of parentheses in the numerator and denominator because a long division bar indicates the need for uh, additional sets of parentheses. So here's another simplification we can do. I have 1 minus 5x over 5x minus 1. These things look really similar to one another, but they're not exactly the same, so we can't just cancel them. But suppose I were to take a negative out of the top. This would give me negative 1 plus 5x. Okay, now the reason I might do that, and notice it's fine because if I distributed the negative in, it would be a positive 1 and a negative 5x. No problem. But what that allows me to do, I can take this negative out front here, so negative 15. I can turn these two terms around so that they match what's in the denominator. And now that can cancel. So two things that uh, a binomial that is similar, but they're conjugates of one another, you can cancel them to 
negative 1. Nice rule to have, saves you some time there. But now we end up with the function 15, negative 15 over x. So that's great. That was a really simple function to work with. What I'm going to do is plug this into the calculator and use a table because tables are a very simple way to get uh, the ability to evaluate a function at a lot of different points. All right, so 0 0.19, 0 0.199, 0 0.201, 0 0.221. Okay, so anyway, yes. All right, um, if your table isn't allowing you to type values in, if you hit second and table settings, the window button, just make sure your independent variable is set to ask because um, the independent variable is x and that allows you to put values in for x and then it calculates y values for you. All right, so negative 78.95, that goes there, negative 75.38. Negative 74.63 and negative 71.43. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening to this limit. All right, so here I have values that are just smaller than one fifth because one fifth is 0.2, but I'm getting closer and closer to 0.2, which is one fifth. These values are getting smaller, but they look like they might be approaching, say, negative 75. And then if we go the other direction, so uh, 0.21 and then 0 0.201, that's also getting closer to 0.2. And you can see here, these also look like they're approaching negative 75. So I would say uh, the answer to this a good guess to the value of the slope of the tangent line would be negative 75. And in fact, um, with this form of the function right here, you can actually plug in the limit value now. Like you could take 0.2 and just plug that into the function and it would calculate. You canceled out this factor here, which was causing the uh, zero over zero situation. So, you know, you can just use the function itself.